Hi, I'm Mac Bell and I'm a cardiac physiologist. I work at St Thomas's Hospital. As a cardiac physiologist, we're, we're like investigators. So doctors, clinicians come up to us and ask us to perform certain tests. As a cardiac physiologist, I run obviously cardiac specific tests for the heart. Um, I put patient exercise tests. We test for stuff like arrhythmias, such as um, if they've got ischemia or if they've got any kind of heart arrhythmias that could be a problem through. Or if someone's just got general chest pain, I want to rule out is it a card cardiac cause or not. Um, do other things as well. At the end of my actual career, I will specialise in one of two routes, electrics, which is working with pacemakers, yeah. and hopefully something called EP, or I go down the imaging route, or which is plumbing. So what it is, it's looking at um, echo scans of the heart, and it's mostly based on congenital diseases of the heart. So we're the guys who basically do the scanning or the investigations, and from the pacing side, we're also the guys who um, optimise the patient's devices, they last as long, they do have any problems, we can make sure that the device is working fine, such as if, say, the lead's um, broken, then we can obviously shut down that particular lead or get it replaced where the warning calls as well, so they send us wireless signals. There's a lot going on. There's lots of places to branch from. Um, so imagine someone comes in for a heart attack, and they go straight to cath labs, hopefully, and then cath lab is where they put angiograms, so they put a catheter inside you, pop a balloon, open that stent up, and then hopefully the vessel will be nice and perfused. Wherever the blockage is, they open the stent. Mm -hmm. It's like a little mesh sort of um, tube, and it just opens up inside there. But we're the guys who do the hemodynamic monitoring, so the doctors and the nurses can't really know exactly where they're going. We're the ones who monitor via pressure trace and ECG to make sure they're in the right chambers, make sure they're, they're not too far in the vessel. And obviously if something does go wrong, like the pressure start to drop or someone goes into DT, we're the guys who shock you and bring you back to life will help with it. Uh, GSCC, I did the standard sciences. Uh, I think I did RE, um, was it drama, food tech, ADT, but it's now known as Ashcroft Technology Academy. It's the one in Putney or Wandsworth. Obviously, A levels after, because it's part of the academy, so it's Ashcroft Technology or ADT College. So I did, um, initially, I did business studies. Um, what did I do? Business studies, English literature, and biology. I studied um, healthcare science, cardiac physiology at St George's University. Essentially, I could get my equivalence and become a cardiac scientist, which is what you become after you do a three year master program for the STP. But essentially, that's more research based. So, a lot of what I do is science in terms of analyzing data to help uh, get results and help diagnose patients. I chose my degree particularly because I, I noticed my sister did biomedical but she was still struggling to get a job so it was a new degree, it was advertised as if it was going to be quite a bit of exercise testing for patients which I used to do when I was younger. I used to um, train patients, well, I used to train clients doing VO2 testing. It was very similar to what I used to do before in terms of personal training but also they advertised more as clinical tests so what you do with personal training you can apply as clinical tests. Okay, so because a lot of it's clinically based in hospitals, I actually kind of knew that I was going to get a job and it would be exactly what I'm studying and what I'm practicing there. So I, I did have expectations that I'd get a job. I was on the lucky few, I actually got employed by the hospital I studied at. I know quite a few people didn't, but yeah, the expectation was just to get a job. I was, I was quite confident that there was going to be a job available for me because there's jobs everywhere for physiology. Yeah. We're just, just not around as much. So from the university, I'd say no, but from my clinical placement, yes, I got really good support. In fact, I, I can hold to my heart when my manager there actually helped me a lot. He helped me get my job. He got me published in a couple of papers, and it was um, what well, he's been com what well, he's been giving me confidence ever since. He, he's guided me through it. Um, so at the clinical placement, if you make a good impression, they they want to hire you. So you're already in the job, and obviously they want you to do the best you can. Most likely they'll give you a job as long as you show you're trying. So you've got bandings in the NHS. I think band five, um, uh, basically I think you've got six or eight. I can't remember, they keep changing it. Well, they changed it recently. Actually. Band five goes up to 28K, but then you also, or is it 20, I think it's 26K. And then um, you also get your five grand in the London waiting if you're working in a London hospital. Band six starts at about 26, I think it goes up to 36. And then um, you get in the London waiting as well. But obviously every year, as long as you 
do your PDR to your self development, you, you should go up a little increment, which I think about a grand or two a bit, until you reach that end point. But the way then it just has changed with the pace girls, I think you can reach your end increment, also the highest amount in that banding, a lot sooner. But the problem is you'll be stuck on that banding for a long time if we can, unless you get applied for a, another banding job, like a band seven. If I was going to buy some, it's the same thing I teach the students that I've told before. Do the degree, it's great. You're going to get a job. Just make sure you go to a trust that is going to train you. I'd say get your training done before you do any local work, anything else. Just to get a trust that's going to train you. As soon as you're trained, you get the echo or pacing, pacing specialism, you're sorted for life. I mean, you can locum, you can you can travel the world, you can do whatever you want. Just get that training down. That's the main thing. Degree-wise, do it any university you want. It doesn't matter. Just get it done. As part of your degree program, you will be trained in that trust. Which half of the actual program is you're in that trust working, and they train to do the task. Then you get signed off internally as part of that trust sign off. Now, hopefully, they can promise to train you. But I'd say, if you're worried about not actually getting that training, make sure you have it in writing. So on your contract, make sure it says this person's in training post, i.e., to get trained in either pacing or echo. Have it written down because a lot of people do get dobbed in where they sign contracts but it's just a generic contract says you're a physiologist but nothing specific so if you are worried about that ask them first ask them what they can offer look at their staffing situation do they have enough staff to train you if they don't and they